healing scapular, the green scapular, and share with you a couple stories because Mary, the Virgin Mary, is the mediatrix of all graces, including the grace of healing. So I want to share with you first a story from my own family. I'm one of eight children, and uh, we were born and raised in Tampa, Florida. And some of my family is still there. So I'm used to hot weather. And then I was assigned to Central America for many years. Now I'm in, near Atlanta. And there in Tampa, I, where I first learned the faith, I was sort of immersed in it. And one of the treasures of the faith, of course, is devotion to Mary. It's more than a treasure. I think that devotion to Mary is not a nicety, it's a necessity. It's not a nicety, it's a necessity. We need to enter the heart of Mary tonight. Amen? And begin loving Jesus with her love, believing in him with her faith, hoping in him with her hope. It's the secret to everything. Amen? It really is. We want to be healed through Mary's intercession. Once when I came home from school, my oldest sister, Connie, was crying. So I got home, and there was my sister sitting at her normal place at the dining room table, because there's 10 of us, you know. It wasn't dinner time, it was before dinner, but Connie was sitting in her normal place, and Mom was sitting next to her, and Connie was crying a lot. It was obviously that she was in great pain. And I said to my mom, Mom, what's wrong with Connie? And Mama said to me, well, Jim, she has migraine headaches. She'd just been diagnosed. And I said, Mom, I never heard of that. What's, what's that, a migraine headache? And so Mom tried to explain it to me. I don't think I've ever had one, but they say it's terrible. Like they said, your head is like it's splitting in two with this kind of headache. And they gave my sister some medications, the doctor did. They'd already been trying them, and nothing was working. And Connie was in desperation. And I looked at her, and I looked at Mom, and I said, Mama, yeah, Jim, I know what you need to do. What? You need a green scapular from Our Lady for Connie. A, a what? A green scapular. Can I borrow the car and get one for Connie from the Catholic bookstore? So yes. So mom, they loaned me the car. <laughs> they were very brave, weren't they? I was a teenager. And I went and I went to the, the St. Michael's Catholic bookstore in Tampa and I got a green scapular. It cost me all of 25 cents. And I came home and we lived right across the street from the Catholic church. The scapulars need to be blessed, you see. So I went straight to Father across the street. I had Father bless the green scapular. He did that. It just took a moment. I'm going to show you here, in case you haven't seen one. We have a whole bundle of them here. So Father blessed one of these little green scapulars. We're going to give you one in just a moment. It has an image of Our Lady on one side and her Immaculate Heart on the other. Well, I ran back across the street. Connie is there, still in pain, still crying. I said, Mom, here it is for Connie. Connie, put this on. Connie took it and put it on. I was like maybe 15 or 16, I think it was. So Connie was about 19 or 20. She put the scapular on, and immediately the headache stopped. Immediately. I mean, bamus, gone. Hasta la vista, baby. Gone. Just like that. Amen? Isn't that beautiful? Yes. And it's so nice to see a miracle in your own family home. Amen? Amen? Our Catholic faith belongs in the home, the domestic church, in the home. Well, that's not the end of the story. A few months, excuse me, a few months later, I came home from school, and Connie's crying again, like three months later. She'd been perfectly healed. And I said, Connie, Mama, what's wrong with Connie? She said, Jimmy, she has the migraine headaches again. And I looked at her and said, Connie, where's your green scapular? She said to me, I lost it today. I said, Mom, I know just what we need to do. What? Can I borrow the car again? I went straight to St. Michael's Catholic Bookstore. I bought another green scapular for all of 25 cents. Went back home, went across the street, had Father bless it, gave it to Connie. Connie, put this on. She put it on, gone. And they never came back. Amen? Should we clap for Jesus and Mary?
Don't you just love Jesus and Mary? Isn't it cool to know they're alive? They're not a pretty story. They're living persons. Amen? They're alive. Well, fast forward. I'm a missionary priest in England. And I had to do mass in what's called the Boonies, way out in the middle of nowhere on the shore of England, these three little tiny churches. And I got to one of them to say mass, and the two uh, sacristan ladies were there. They were Irish. There's a lot of Irish people who work in England. They're the most beautiful Irish brogue. I wish I could do that accent, you know. My brother could do it really well. I can't do it too great. So beautiful, their voices. They're getting the mass ready. And the one told the other, she says, come on, honey, tell father, tell father, tell him. And I said, what, what's wrong? She said, tell father. She said, oh, father. She said, it's my husband. And I said, so what else is new? You know. <laughs> I said, what about your husband? She said, well, my husband, he retired finally after many years he entered into his retirement. He's been looking forward to it all his life. We both were. He's now fully retired. I said, isn't that good? He said, well, Father, when he never leaves the house. He's like been retired now, I think she said for, if I remember correctly, two and a half years at that point. It was my first time at this church, two and a half years. And she said to me that, Father, he never leaves the house. When I'm home, he follows me around wherever I go. If I go to wash the dishes, he stands right next to me. He doesn't help, but he stands right next to me. If I vacuum the floor, he's right there. Father, when I go to the bathroom, he stands outside the door. I can't get rid of him. But he won't go outside. If I go to the mailbox, I have to get the mail. I said, well, then get it more often. You know what I mean? She said, I don't know what to do. I said, I think I know just what you need to do. And she said, what? She said, I think you need a green scapular. So, because he had heals not just physical things, but also emotional and psychological things, you see? And so I said, let me check my jacket. I had just flown in to England for the United States of America, and there was nothing in my pocket, but I was just praying. I said, Father Flanagan taught me to do, our founder. So I went to my jacket and reached in my pocket, and lo and behold, there was one green scapular in my pocket. I couldn't believe it. I said, look, here it is. This is for your husband. Now, he may not want it. <laughs> so, hide it under the chair where he sits all the time. His favorite lounge chair. So he said, hide it under the chair, and whenever you receive the green scapular, you see, either the person who receives it or the person who gives it, what's to say the prayer that's printed on the back of the scapular once a day? And it's a tiny prayer. Immaculate Heart of Mary, pray for us now and at the hour of our death. Would you say that after me now? Immaculate Heart of Mary, pray for us, now and at the hour of our death. You got it, you see? You got it. That's all you have to do once a day. Just you say it for him, put it under the chair, trust this to Jesus through his mother Mary. Okay, Father. So Mass was over. I left. I had to come back to that church for another month. We had a rotation, the priests who were there, so my turn came up again a month later, and I'm back at the three little churches in the boonies, and I go to this little church, and two sacristan ladies from Ireland are both there, and the one says, the Katie, Katie, tell Father, tell Father. Katie, tell him. I said, Katie, what, Katie, tell me. She says, Father, do you remember the story about my husband? I says, yes, I remember. And you gave me the green scapular? I remember. Did you hide it under his chair? I did. Did it work? Father! The next morning he got up and he went to get the mail himself. <laughs> the next morning. And then, when I went shopping later in the day, he asked me if he could come with me to the store. I said, That's great. And Father, when I went to the store the next day, he also wanted to go with me. And Father, yes, Katie, wherever I go, he follows me. Wherever I go, he's always with me. I said, well, Katie, God used me to heal the first problem. I think you're on your own on the second one now. I think I did my job already. But that's how, how well the scapular works. Amen? And it heals physical, emotional, and psychological problems. 
So what I want to do is I want to touch the scapulars to the tabernacle now, because I always like for the great high priest, the Lord Jesus Christ, for him to give your scapular his blessing. Is that okay? I'm going to ask Father Dennis to give a little tiny one, and then I'm going to go to the altar, then we're going to pass these out to you before I continue. And just in case, we'll bless both packs, just in case we need them. They're already blessed, but give a simple blessing. Two or three bundles, boys. 